I met Antonio on FB last summer. He sent me a friend request. In fact, after I joined a household tips group, I started getting tons of friend requests from random men. At the time, I accepted most friend requests from people just because I thought that it was great to meet people from all over. My friends list had people from my town to people from across the globe. Buyer beware, this is not a good thing to do. It's cool to meet people from all over the world, but you don't have to add them as a friend on your profile and open your world to them, but I digress. Antonio's request was accepted, and I browsed his profile. It said he was from Malta, but lived in New York City, and it said he was a military agent, which I thought was odd, but I figured maybe he worked for the government of Malta. I wasn't sure. He had a few pictures of himself on his profile and a couple of videos of him having dinner. One video of him toasting to the camera. He immediately sent me a message introducing himself. He said he was 50 years old and lived in New York City but was from Malta and had a home here too. He said his wife died in a car accident five years ago and he had a daughter whose name was Janet and she was seven years old. He said he'd been raising his daughter by himself since his wife's passing. He told me my pictures were beautiful, and he started heart reacting to nearly all of my photos. I was flooded with notifications. He asked if I was single and where I lived. I was single. I had gotten out of a bad one-year relationship exactly a month ago. And I told him this, and that I wasn't looking to date anyone, but thanked him for the friend request, and it's great to meet people online from all over. He asked if I had any kids, which I don't. I'm 47 years old. He asked me if I planned to bear any children soon, which I found that to be an oddball question. I told him, no, at 47 years old, the likelihood of me bearing a child would be a bit much. I always wanted to have kids in a family, but life had different plans in the cards for me. He told me his daughter Janet was really sad and missing that motherly figure but he did his best to raise her right. I told him being a single dad is not easy, but I'm sure he's doing well. Antonio told me that he tried, but he was struggling with raising her and with his work, so he had put his daughter in an international boarding school that was run by an all-female staff of house mothers so they can be a motherly figure to his daughter. I asked him where his daughter is, as I assumed it would be in New York since he said he lives there. He told me she was in Sweden at a very prestigious boarding school. I remember asking him what kind of work he did as his profile section was a little bit odd and vague. He told me he worked for the United Nations and the government of Malta as a peace agent. I asked him if that's like a peace officer, and he said he travels to various countries where there's conflict to work and negotiate with government officials to bring peace and building contracts for roads and bridges to underdeveloped countries. I didn't exactly understand what it was he did, but at the time it sounded to me like he was a government contractor. He asked just general questions and asked what I did for hobbies in my spare time, asked where I lived, asked if I lived alone, which I found that question to be creepy. I was open with him, but there were times his questions were odd, especially to a stranger, but he was nice enough. We would chat online here and there. Anytime I came onto FB, he would message me within seconds of me being on. It was like he was waiting for me or watching to see when I came online. He asked several times if I chatted on Hangouts and asked for my email. I told him that I don't really chat anywhere to anyone except on here. I had conversations going with a lot of friends online, but used Messenger. Antonio told me that I should download Hangouts or WhatsApp. I told him I would think about it, and I wasn't interested in downloading stuff to my phone. He asked me what type of phone I had, and I told him it's just an Android, nothing fancy. I wasn't into fancy phones. He told me he had an iPhone Pro Max 14, and he told me I should buy myself one. I remember telling him I wasn't big into technology and was happy with my current phone. He told me to think about downloading a chat app, and I told him I'll consider it, 
but I'm happy here. He informed me that he was unable to continue chatting often on FB as his work causes him to travel a lot and he uses WhatsApp for all calls and chats and he wanted to stay in touch with me. I told him just message me when you're here and we'll talk. We had some minor chit chat in the following days and he kept asking me to download WhatsApp or Hangouts. He asked for my phone number. I guess at first I had a wall up around me due to the fact that I had just gotten out of a really bad relationship. I told Antonio this. I shared a bit about my ex and what a disastrous relationship it was. I told him I am guarded, and he told me that not all men are like my ex, and he was an honest, caring, and sincere man. I had no reason not to believe he wasn't, but as I told him, please give me time. He said okay and started talking about his daughter Janet and shared some photos of her. He said she was doing okay in boarding school but missed him. I asked him how often he sees his daughter and he told me once a year for the holiday because due to his work he has to travel so often. I told him that's terrible but I hope that she was in a good space. He told me the school is very strict and again told me it's a school run by women only, and it's an all-girls boarding school. So, she has motherly advice and figures to look up to. I told him that's great, but she needs her father too. He told me he has to work, as he is on contract with the government. He said they're sending him to Bangkok, Thailand for a diplomatic meeting as the UN wants to build a new road in the countryside, and he's going there to negotiate the project and speak to the government there to allow the new roads to be built. He said he would be in Thailand for two weeks and would be leaving in a few days. I wished him a good trip and he asked me if I had downloaded WhatsApp. He even gave me the link in chat to download the app. I told him I'll do it later, but I had to go to work. We didn't talk that evening, but the next day he sent me a message telling me he was leaving for his flight the next day and asked me if I downloaded WhatsApp. I guess his constant asking me prompted me to download it. We exchanged numbers and he added me on there. He told me it was better to chat here and when he travels and he really enjoys my company. I told him that I enjoyed chatting to him too, but I wasn't interested in a relationship, just friendship. He agreed and said it takes time and dedication to get to know someone and grow closer. Antonio left for his trip and we chatted on WhatsApp regularly. He sent me photos of Thailand, where he said he was, and his hotel room view. I've enclosed these photos for your viewers. He said the negotiations were a success and he was granted the contract for the construction company to build a new road in the Thai countryside. He said the contract he negotiated would be granted and he would earn $300,000 once it was completed. I told him I was proud of him and congratulated him on his success. A few hours after he told me about the contract, Antonio called me on WhatsApp. It wasn't a video call, but a voice call, and we had our first voice chat. He had a very, very interesting accent. I've never spoken to anyone from Malta, so it was different. His accent to me sounded French or a mix of Caribbean and French. He told me the contract was a success, but they were sending him to South Africa for another contract. He told me he was worried about his daughter as he was supposed to visit her in boarding school and attend her school master's conference meeting to update on her grades, and he was unable to make it. He said unfortunately he couldn't back out of the work assignment, and the school master was upset with him, but he said she understood and he would fly to Sweden as soon as possible to sign off on her grades and have a meeting with the school master. He said it was required of all parents to come for the annual teacher-parent conference meeting. I told him that it must be hard on his daughter not to see him often, but he said she understood as it's his job and he needs to be there to work to give her the best education. He said he would fly out to South Africa after this last business meeting as he would be there for an unknown amount of time. He had to negotiate with the South African government to allow a construction company contract for them to help the failing infrastructure 
and that the Malta government was offering $10 million to help fix the roads in South Africa. He went into great detail about the roads in South Africa, specifically Johannesburg. He seemed to be very knowledgeable of it. I asked if he had been there before, and he said yes. He's been all over South Africa, West Africa, Nigeria, Ghana, Togo, Ivory Coast, and the Gambia. He asked me if I had been there, and I told him no. He said he knew he could secure the contract. He was actually easy to talk to. I know it sounds weird, but despite his accent, I found it comforting to talk to him. It made me realize how lonely I had been and how different it was to have the attention of a man who listened to me. My ex was very self-absorbed and always talked about himself and his needs, and his needs turned into abuse. So this was quite refreshing to hear a man ask how I'm feeling and how my day was going. Our voice chats turned into a once-in-a-while thing to an every-night after-work thing to Antonio called me in the middle of the night and we would talk till morning. He made it to South Africa and settled in his hotel room. He sent me photos of his hotel room. He sent me videos of South Africa, the roads he would be asking the government contract for the government agency construction company to fix. He said the food was terrible there, but he was surviving. He said he was worried about his daughter as he had not heard from her or the school and she wasn't answering her emails. I asked him if this had happened before and he said no, but the school was upset with him for not showing up to her annual grades meeting. I told him that maybe she's busy with school projects. He sent me some more pictures of his daughter and said that she is the heartbeat and the whole life and he only wished to complete his dream with me. I told him that he has me as a friend and I'll always be here for him, but then he asked if we could commit a relationship. I was unsure what to say. Yes, we grew close and chatted all the time, but I was still guarded and I was unsure to let him into my life and into a relationship. I told him I needed time and he told me he would be here waiting to accept his love. He kept telling me he wanted to prove to me he wasn't like my ex. He was a good and trustworthy man. He had said this to me several times and then said that he thought I didn't want a relationship with him because he has a daughter and he asked if Janet was the reason I was hesitant to be with him. I told him no, absolutely not. And I thought his daughter was great and him having a daughter didn't cause me to be distant. I was just unsure. From that moment on, he flooded me with loving words, poems, pictures, he would make with me and him together and put hearts around it and all sorts of romantic gestures. He told me every single morning how beautiful I was and I would call and we would talk every night and he never wavered from his kindness. I was drowning in romance and love and attention and I guess that's what I needed to let my guard down. I told Antonio that yes, I'd be in a relationship with him. He said I made him the happiest man in the world and he called me crying and told me he would love me like no other. It was all so romantic like a movie and I let my guard down and allowed him into my world. Antonio changed his relationship status on his profile to in a relationship with me and he shared my profile photo to his wall and called me his woman for life. Well I changed my status as well and my sister and a few other friends messaged me asking who this person is. I told Antonio that my sister messaged me asking about us, and he told me it would be best not to tell her or anyone too much information, as he wanted to make a good and big impression when he flew out to meet me, and then we could meet my family. I was a little surprised by this, as I thought he would be happy that I shared everything, but he said that friends and family can get jealous, and he didn't want that to happen. I told him my friends and family are not like that, but he was still hesitant. My sister actually ended up sending him a message in a joking way and said he picked my sister, Lord have mercy on him, and laughed. Antonio called me very upset, saying my sister was asking questions about his personal life, and he's very concerned. I told him that he didn't have to talk to her until he met her in person, and not to get too upset that she was probably being playful. That's just how she is. She was curious who you are and what you're about. He said that she quizzed him on his life, who he was, where he was from, 
but my sister told me she just sent a playful, fun message. This caused some tension between us all, and I told my sister, he's originally from Malta, so maybe he doesn't get our American humor. My sister stepped back and just let me have my relationship. She did tell Antonio she looked forward to meeting him for dinner soon. Antonio never replied to her. He said he was very busy with his contract and things were so messy here with the negotiations. He said after the contract ended, he had to fly to Sweden to check on his daughter and then he would be flying to visit me. I was excited to meet him in person. He told me he had a big surprise when we met and he sent me a picture of a ring box, which I've included in my email. I told him, that's too fast, and he didn't need to buy anything from me. He told me he looked forward to showing me in person what a wonderful, truthful, and dedicated man he is. He would often send pictures of me and him side by side with flowers and hearts. He seemed extremely romantic and sensitive. It was different than my past relationships. Antonio told me the contract negotiations were difficult, but things were moving along. He then called me late at night, as he normally does, and told me that he was still having difficulties with securing the big contract, and he would meet some diplomats tomorrow. But he said that he was worried about his daughter, Janet. It had been weeks, and he still hadn't heard from her. I asked him if he tried calling the school, and he said they won't answer. He had sent countless emails that go unanswered, and the school headmaster had also not answered. He asked me if maybe I could email the school and just tell them I am her new mother. He thought maybe his messages were not going through due to the poor internet where he was at. Well, I told him I could email on his behalf, but he said that he added me to the school visitor list as Janet's stepmother, which was a little too much for me, but I told him if I can help, I will and he gave me the email address to the school. I sent an email explaining that Janet's father Antonio was having trouble emailing as he is on a job site abroad, and he wanted to check on his daughter and that I am Antonio's girlfriend and we're worried about Janet. I received an email from Miss Waters, who said she was the headmaster of the school. She stated that Janet's tuition has not been paid and she was dismissed from the school and they're keeping her in a private room and withholding her school classes until her father pays the overdue tuition. And she then emailed a bill for $4,500 for her overdue tuition. Miss Waters stated his bank payment failed to go through and they have turned off Janet's Wi-Fi, taken her laptop as its property of the school, as well as her phone as its owned by the school. I was really upset by this, but the school headmaster stated Janet is fine, is being housed in a dormitory for children whose parents didn't pay tuition, and she is sharing a room with six other girls. I called Antonio, but got his voicemail. I told him to call me as soon as possible, as I've heard about Janet. He called me later that night and said he was in negotiations for a contract. I told him what happened and he was outraged. He was screaming and crying, saying that he paid her tuition and he would call the bank right away and he hung up on me. Antonio called me back stating that someone had gotten into his bank account and filtered all of the money and he had to put a fraud stop on his account and would have to sort it out when he returned home that the bank needed him to fill out some forms to straighten his account out and trace where his money went. He said, because this happened, the school's payment didn't go through, and he thinks his emails were failing to show up as he didn't have great Wi-Fi. He asked me to email the school and ask them if Janet can talk to him or me. I told him the school took away her phone and laptop, and she's being housed in a delinquent payment dormitory with other kids whose parents didn't pay tuition. He was crying and upset. He said he needed to get in touch with her. I emailed him the tuition fee the headmaster had sent to me. He told me he had to finish his contract and get the heck out of here. Over the next few days, I received email after email from the headmaster asking if the payment has been secured. I let her know that Antonio was working in South Africa and explained about the bank issue. I told her he would pay it as soon as he gets back. She told me that they cannot house his daughter much longer and that the other girls in the dormitory were put in time out for causing problems with Janet and that Janet was crying and losing out on her education. 
She told me, again, that it was $4,500 for the tuition, and Antonio had two days to pay it, or they would turn Janet over to an orphanage as they can no longer give her free meals and housing. I asked the headmaster if there's a phone number where I can talk to Janet and let her know her father's going to fix everything. She said no, that her father has to pay the tuition in two days or Janet will just be sent to an orphanage. She did give me the number to the school front desk, which it was a Swedish phone number. I gave the number to Antonio and told him what the headmaster has said. Antonio said he was so angry and he was confused and didn't know what to do as he couldn't get home in time. He asked me if I'd be able to pay the tuition and he could pay me back after he returned home. He said he closed the contract and would fly to New York in one week's time, but he couldn't get home sooner to fix his account. He showed me a check the government wrote him for $250,000 for securing the contract. He would have to take the check home with him. I told Antonio that's a lot of money and I don't know how to obtain that amount. He started crying on the phone telling me he was a failure of a father and of a partner and having to ask his soulmate for money. He was wailing and crying. My heart broke for him. I told him I'll handle it, but he needed to get home and fix this and pay me back. He promised he would and not to worry at all. I emailed the headmaster, Miss Waters, and she told me that I would need to remit the $4,500 by tomorrow, or Janet would be taken to an orphanage. I ended up calling the number to the school, and no one answered. I then received a call back a few minutes later from an unknown number. It was the woman who said she was Miss Waters. She had a really strange accent. I couldn't put my finger on where she was from. She asked who this was, and I told her my name and that I had been emailing with her about Janet's schooling. She informed me that the orphanage is going to pick her up soon, and I let her know I'll be paying her tuition school fees, and I asked how to pay them. She told me she would have to call me back as she needs to cancel the orphanage coming to get Janet and would call me back. About a half an hour later, I received a phone call from Miss Waters, and she told me to check my email and to make a swift payment. I asked if I could talk to Janet, and she told me no, not until the payment was made. I received an email from the school with payment information. I was to do a bank transfer to a woman's name in Stockholm, Sweden. When I replied to the email asking who this is, Miss Waters again called me, saying the information is where to make the payment. That is the owner of the school. She advised me to make the payment and then copy an email of the bank transfer copy and send it to her. I hung up with her and went ahead and did the transfer online. Then I sent it over, and how I did this was I deferred my tax payment on my property. I had four more months to pay, but I could make a partial split payment, and that's what I opted for. Antonio promised to pay me back. I did the transfer, and then I heard nothing. I then received an email from Janet. She thanked me for paying her school fees and asked if I was her new mother. I called the school and again it rang and stopped, and then I received a call back from an unknown number. It was Miss Waters thanking me for the payment. I asked to speak to Janet and she said Janet was back in her classes. I told Miss Waters to tell Janet to email or call her father as soon as she could, and she promised me she would. I called Antonio and left him a voicemail telling him the payment was made and Janet's back in school. Antonio called me a few hours later thanking me, and he said Janet's teacher called him, and Janet spoke to him crying that she was so happy to be back in school. I felt good helping, and he said that Janet asked if I was her new mother. I admit it pulled at my heartstrings, and I told Antonio I couldn't wait to meet him and his daughter and asked when he's flying back. He told me he was leaving soon for New York and would call me when his flight arrived, and he was in the taxi. During this time, I started to receive calls from unknown numbers, mostly hang-up calls and some calls where a person would stay on the phone. I could hear them, but they wouldn't speak. This was so weird to me, as I'd never gotten calls like that before. I messaged Antonio, telling him I knew he was in the air, but I wanted him to have some messages when he landed, and I sent him a handful of sweet loving messages and a few voice notes. They had gone on read, and I kept checking them to make sure that when he read them, and I could expect his call. 
I received an email from the schoolmaster, Miss Waters, again. She asked me if I knew where Antonio, Janet's father, was, as they'd been trying to get in touch with him. I told her that he was flying home to New York, and Miss Waters told me that they were told he would be flying to Sweden to attend Janet's missed conference to go over her grades and school progress as he missed the last appointment. I told her that he likely will be there, but he had to fly home from a business trip and fly to New York to fix a bank issue. The headmaster told me that Antonio must attend the conference or Janet would be removed from the school, as it's required. I told her that I would let him know as I was expecting a call from him as soon as his flight lands. I sent a message to Antonio letting him know what happened, and I still heard nothing. I then received a call from a South African phone number that I didn't know. When I answered, it was a man calling himself Mr. Johnson. He asked if I am Antonio's wife. I told him, well, I'm his girlfriend. We're not married yet. He identified himself as a security personnel for the United Nations, as he was in charge of building an infrastructure. He told me they are reaching out to his wife, as Antonio has been detained in Johannesburg and is being held. When I asked him what happened, he told me that Antonio secured building materials for the contracted construction project and that the materials were inferior. And when they tried to use the road materials, they melted and caused major damage to the village roads outside of Johannesburg. Mr. Johnson claimed that Antonio took half a million dollars in material money and then sold them cheaper materials with a construction company materials seller known as Mr. Riley. I told him I had no idea what he was talking about and that Antonio is an upstanding man and he is supposed to be flying to New York. I asked to speak with Antonio and they put him on the phone. Antonio said that his business partner, Mr. Riley, lied to him and switched the materials and took the money, and now Mr. Riley is on the run and has left for London, and they're holding him. He said he needs to explain things, but since he's a foreigner, they said he needs a legal advisor representative. He said Mr. Riley, his business partner, took off and he's stuck here. They are telling him that they will put him in jail if he doesn't come up with the money for legal representation. I asked Antonio what he's going to do, and he told me that it was $2,000 for the legal representation. He was confused, and they said they were going to hold him in a jail cell. I told him the situation with Janet, and he started to wail and cry. He begged me to help him, and I told him I would contact the embassy, and he told me, no, since he's a citizen of Malta and the USA, they won't help him. This is a legal matter, and he begged me to help him by paying the money to the council. They took the phone away from Antonio, and I could hear him screaming and yelling. Mr. Johnson got back on the phone and told me that they put him into a jail cell, and that I need to pay the legal counsel, or he would be sitting in a jail cell for years until he could see a judge. He asked me to make the payment, and I could hear Antonio screaming and yelling for help in the background. I yelled, asking what they were doing, but all I heard was screaming. It was horrible. I asked Mr. Johnson what I can do, and he told me I would need to send the money, $2,000 via a bank transfer. He hung up on me, and I received a message on WhatsApp from the South African phone number. He gave me the bank account of a man in Johannesburg and said, send it right away, and sent me a picture of a filthy jail cell. He said that was Antonio's new jail cell. Things got worse as I received a call from Miss Waters telling me that Janet had fallen ill and they had to rush her to the school clinic. Miss Waters told me Janet needs medication and they can't reach her father. During my phone call with Miss Waters, I kept getting calls from a South African number who I assumed was Mr. Johnson. Mr. Johnson sent me a message asking why I wasn't answering the phone, not to be foolish. My head was spinning. I asked Miss Waters what was wrong with Janet and explained that her father was delayed getting home. I don't know what to do. Miss Waters told me that Janet needs medication. She's fallen ill and the medication is $500 and I need to pay it right away. Meanwhile, Mr. Johnson is sending me photos of a prison where Antonio will be going. He sent me a voice clip of Antonio begging me for help. It was too much. My heart was breaking. I ended up asking Miss Waters how to get medication for Janet. She told me the owner of the school would need payment, the same as before, and I ended up sending the money through my bank. This was a huge hit to my account, but the child should come first, and I made sure she got her medication. 
Meanwhile, Mr. Johnson told me Antonio had been taken to a detention center since I did not make the payment for his legal counsel, and it would be years before he would be able to see a judge. I asked him how he is, and he told me Antonio was sick with an infection from the unclean jail cell, but since I turned my back on him, I shouldn't worry myself about it. I told Mr. Johnson that Antonio's daughter had fallen ill and I had to send money for her medication. He told me that was fine, but that his daughter would never see her father again for years as he was being locked away and he's extremely ill. I asked to speak to Antonio, but Mr. Johnson told me he's too weak and sick and he's locked away in a dirty jail cell. I asked Mr. Johnson how to pay legal counsel, and he told me since I waited, it would now be $2,500 as the legal counsel was very busy and not into games. He told me to send the money right away, and the legal counsel would get Antonio out of jail and into a hospital and would wait for their court date. My head was spinning from everything that was going on. I ended up taking a quick money loan. I had good credit, so the loan loaded into my bank in one day. I told Mr. Johnson, and he again sent me the name of someone in Johannesburg, South Africa, to send the money to. I wired the money over, and he told me as soon as the payment was received, a legal counsel would check on Antonio. I waited and waited and checked on Janet, who was doing better and back in her school dorm. Mr. Johnson told me that Mr. Adigui was Antonio's legal counsel and they had gotten him out of jail, but he was too weak to walk, and he was rushed to a local hospital. He had a bad infection and needed antibiotics, but Antonio was unable to pay for them, so they discharged him, and he was laying on the council's office floor. The legal counselor, Mr. Adigui. He told me that they had a prescription for Antonio from the hospital, but he had no money to fill it, and he was not responsible to pay it. Antonio was. I asked him how much the prescription was, and he said the pharmacy accepts iTunes cards as payment, and it was $100 in iTunes cards. I told him I'll pay it, and asked him how I send the money, but he told me I had to get a $100 iTunes card and send a picture of it through text. I went to the store and bought a card and gave it to him through WhatsApp text. He showed me a picture of the medication he picked up for Antonio, and that Antonio was resting. I asked to speak to him again, but he said Antonio was asleep and so weak. He told me that Antonio would have to go to court and there would be court fees that were due. He gave me a rundown of the cost, which included $10,000 for his international plea, but he told me there was a way around all of this. I asked him how, and he told me we could just pay off the judge for $50,000 and they would make everything clear and send Antonio home. He wouldn't be allowed back in South Africa ever again, but if we pay the judge off, he would stamp his clearance and book him a flight home. I'd never heard of such a thing, and I told him, that wouldn't happen here in the U.S. He told me, this is South Africa, and everything can be fixed with money. I told him, I'm not made of money, and I would have to see if I could get a loan. He told me to hurry and let him know, and that Antonio would contact me soon. I ended up reaching out to my sister, June. I was so upset over everything and had just lost so much weight and sleep over this entire ordeal. I confided in her what was going on and asked her if she could loan me $50,000. My sister owns a successful business and asking her out of desperation was the only thing I knew to do. She ended up messaging Antonio on FB and telling him something sounded very off about this whole situation. She asked me, how much money I had already sent, and I told her the entire story from start to finish. Pretty soon, Antonio was sending me messages on WhatsApp asking what's the meaning of this, that my sister sent messages to him saying he was a liar and a scammer and to leave her sister alone. I told Antonio, I don't know anything about that, and he was mad at me that I told my sister about our personal relationship issues. I told him I was trying to get the loan from her to pay off the judge and get him home. He said it wasn't her business and to just apply for a loan from my bank or somewhere else. I told him I can't, I don't have enough credit, and I was already in debt. He told me that I didn't care for him and that I should never include my family in our personal business. 
I told him that his daughter had been sick and I paid her tuition and her medicine and paid for his legal counsel and medicine and if I didn't care, I wouldn't have done all that. I asked if he checked on his daughter and he said he was far too sick. I told him, well, he sounds better now and he needs to call her. He said he would and he hung up on me. I was at a loss and then Antonio posted on his FB profile that he had been abandoned by someone he thought loved him and that he posted he was single on his relationship status. I was in shock by this, and I called Antonio. He answered and asked what I wanted, that I had forsaken him. I told him I love him very much, but his post, and now that he's single, hurt me. He said being stuck in South Africa hurt him, and I wouldn't help him, and I involved my family. My sister replied on his post and stated he's a scammer and posted links and photos in the comments about the Italian model whose photos he's using and said he's nothing but a scammer. I saw the comments and posts and then my sister was trying to call me. I told Antonio I had to go and I pretended I didn't see the post on his profile and I don't think he'd seen them yet either. He asked me why I'm hanging up and I lied telling him I was getting a call from the bank about the loan. He said okay, told me he loved me, and asked I call him back. My sister told me the profile is not real and the photos are stolen and that the photos are used in scams and she thinks I've been scammed. I remember I started crying and was in shock and upset. I don't know how I would handle this, but I decided to block Antonio on FB and then I called him on WhatsApp. I knew he would answer, as he thought I would have his money. I told him he's nothing but a liar and I confronted him about the photos and being a scammer. That's when my Prince Charming turned into an evil man. He laughed at me and I heard others laughing in the background and saying something I couldn't understand. He told me I was nothing but a fool and he enjoyed using all my money and treating his girlfriend to jewelry and he has other foolish women like me sending him money and not to worry that I didn't send so much so losing me was not a big impact. I called him a bunch of names and I blocked him on WhatsApp. I spent the next few months catching up on bills and blocking fake profiles who would send me requests. I ended up having to change my number because I would receive calls from unknown callers to international numbers to American phone numbers. Some people would speak asking for me by name and when I asked what they wanted they would hang up. Some calls I received were threats about money. Some were threats to show my photos and videos, which I never sent him anything adult in nature, so I had no idea what some of those calls were about. And I even received calls from Miss Waters, the school, about the headmaster telling me that Janet had been abandoned and I was being reported to the police for abandoning a minor child. It was absolutely ridiculous and a nightmare. My FB became a hub for friend request and I said I had to change my phone number. My sister started receiving threats via FB2, but she just blocked them all. I was bombarded for months and months from strangers. I know it's ridiculous looking back, but at the time, I really believed Antonio and the entire situation. Thank you for allowing me to share and accept my story. We'd like to thank this lady for sharing her story. The twists and turns that scammers create in their storyline sometimes is just mind-blowing. If you've had an encounter with a romance scammer, whether you lost money or not, and you'd like to share your story, you can find us, scammingscammers at gmail.com. And don't forget to check out our Facebook page, Scamming Cyber Education. You can inbox us there as well. Until next time, stay safe.